Hey there, everyone. I hope you are all doing good. Stesma here. Welcome to this new episode of Schlappy Patching. <laughs> In this one, I decided to get away a little bit from the logic thing, even though we are going to use it, to talk about uh, signal processing. I mean by that using some of the schlappy engineering modules to process sound. We are going to use a pure sine wave and look at the scope to see what some of these different modules can do to your signal. The sine wave being the purest signal you can get, so it's easy to have a look at what's happening on top of it. So, sine wave. Before we get it here, let's go through the data. Let's also sync it. Okay, let's have a look at saturation first with the 100 grit. So I have everything at zero, I'm taking the distorted output. Let's bring the output gate to noon. And same to the input gain. You can see that I have not a sine wave at all at the output. The 100 grit also lets you resonance and many 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 feedback path plus you can live manipulate all this with the brass points from just a sine wave. Now, let's use the first module that was released by Schlappy Engineering, the interstellar radio. We have a signal in and a signal out. Here we can see that the result is tied to the input signal. Interstellar radio is great to turn a sine wave into a massive wall of noise, as you can hear. I guess we never show enough the funny things you can do by patching back the error into any modulation inputs.
Then, we have the angle grinder. As you can see, if you just plug to the grind input and take the grind out, you get an inverted sine wave that's out of phase with the input signal. That's an interesting side effect to take into account. The angle grinder can be a filter, but there's not much to filter in the sine wave. So the interesting part is the grind section being used in filter mode to start with. And using some of the sliders to mangle the signal. As you can see, once again, it's quite interesting to compare the input, which is the green trace and the output, which is the blue one. The input level is key to the results. You can then introduce feedback. It was also a little bit because the FM1 was up, which is something I always do. can be used as a very interesting wave shaper. If you set it fully to oscillator mode, not much happens if you don't have any of the slider up. But when you do, you start to have your input signal acting like a sort of sync signal to the oscillation that's made inside the module. Now, one of the other ones that we can have a look at is the boundary. So if we get into the slew limiter section of the boundary, here you can't see anything because basically we have the same output with the timing here, the rise and fall at zero. But then we start to have some non-linear soft clipping kind of thing. Not linear because it doesn't take the same time to rise and to fall. So we can use this as some sort of a wave shaper, even more using the internal feedback that will bend the wave to make it logarithmic or anti-logarithmic. You can create sort of shark tooth waveform. Also, this doesn't have any volt productive input, so it won't track your signal. Which 
adds to the non-linearity of the thing. It also do some interesting gating effect. Let's modulate this. Sending anything to trig sine wave or not. Will result in triggering the circuit and letting it perform frequency division. Which is quite interesting as well. I almost forgot about what is probably one of my favorite ones because it's also one of the simplest. Amplitude modulation. Patch your signal to the input of a VCA. And let's monitor the output. It's also a good time to check out the saturation of the VCA of the boundary. You can see here that at max I don't have the same than my input signal. It's a bit overdriven, it's a bit squared out. So this is not a fully transparent VCA. So what you can do from there is amplitude modulation, which is modulating the volume of your input. I'm going to do it straight with the boundary itself for convenience. Let's set it to cycle. So what's happening right now is that my bias knob is my initial level. And this is how much the looping envelope circuit is affecting the volume of my sine wave. We can push it to that clipping zone that sounds pretty good at audio rate like this. So you could use this as a simple wave shaper by hand. Or we, or we could use another VCA in Siri to modulate this. Let's do that. So I'm patching the output of my boundary, the envelope part, to the next one in the VCA input. Output to CV1. We are now controlling the amount of amplitude modulation by this boundary. One of the other things we can do is use that range switch, which will set zero in the middle and will let us invert the sine wave or the signal. This will allow us to reintroduce modulation, but for example, starting by an inverted waveform. which will result in ring modulation effect, which is the same thing as amplitude modulation, but with negative signals taking the signal input and reversing it. An easiest way to get ring modulation out of this VCA circuit is to set your range as bipolar, set it around zero and then modulate with a bipolar signal directly. I've always loved the sound of ring modulator being used at slow rate for tremolo type effect. 
This can be very interesting as well on other sources than sine waves. And the particular saturation sounds of this one is also an interesting part. Let's now set it to audio rate. An extremely simple processing can be made using all the logic modules, which is turning anything into a square wave. So if I take my sine wave, and patch it to any of the bitmix channel, I will have a square wave in return which can be quite handy. Same with more control using the nibblers. There's probably a few more things to do with all this, but I guess this is a nice introduction to processing signals using the schlappy modules, outside of the obvious filtering options. I guess in the next episode I will show you stuff using drum machines and breakbeats with all these modules. Thanks for watching, I hope it was helpful. Let us know what are your favorite sound processing tools in the schlappy system. Bye bye, see you next time.